Hello, so today we are going to take a flight in the Antonov AN2 in Microsoft Flight Simulator and we're going to get it running from cold and dark to go through the checklist that I've written up and then we're going to have a play with the navigation kit. So we are in the older variant of this aircraft. So this does not have the GNS 530 or 430. There is an option in the pack of aircraft you get with this uh, with the Antonov that you can have a um, modern GPS kit. I am not using that variant. Personally, I enjoy using the of the period controls to navigate as the pilots would at the time. So we're going to be using the automatic direction finding equipment with non-directional beacons. Okay, so first things first, let's go and get this aircraft started up. So I've written up a checklist now of kind of the functional steps needed to get the aircraft up and running. And I've made that available and I'll put a link to it in the notes of the video. So I've refined it slightly from my first look at the aircraft earlier. So we are going to be using keyboard shortcuts as we move around the aircraft which should help us find our way a little bit more easily. So we're going to start out by pressing Control and 2, which lines us up on the, the switches here, and we're going to push the master power switch forwards. You can see the light comes on to say we have battery power. Okay, so then we go and turn the, top, the comm radios on up here, and then we go and turn the fuel shut off to open. So to do that, we press Control 4, and we move this red lever forwards. Then we press Control and 7 to go down the side of the cockpit and we open the pneumatic valve and we turn the fuel selector to both tanks. We then press Control and 1 to come back to the instrument panel and we're going to go and turn the beacon lights to on. So that's the bottom two switches on this panel down here. Okay, then we turn the anti-fire system on. So to do that we find the fourth switch from the left on the second row, so it's this one. We switch it on and a light comes on over here. So I refer to the switches in the written instructions by their numbering, because obviously, unless you can read Russian, you're going to be quite lost. You can turn on tool tips, but I actually can't find them quite distracting. I'd rather just use the aircraft as it is and learn where things are with muscle memory more than anything. Okay, so um, lower center switch panel we're going to turn the engine parameters indicator power to on. It's the sixth switch from the left. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So having done that, we then do the one next to it, which is the fuel level, indi level indicator. So as I mentioned on my earlier video, the, all the, a lot of these switches are breakout switches for the various looms around the aircraft. So all we're really doing is enabling bits and pieces of avionics. Okay, center pedestal, so control four. We're going to move the prop RPM to high. We're going to make the mixture rich. So I'm going to do that on my yoke. You'll see the blue lever comes towards you for a rich mixture. We're going to crack the throttle open. Then we're going to go to the floor. So control six, and then we can use this wobble pump to pull fuel into the engine. So four or five pulls is usually good. Then control seven and use the primer, so four or five pumps on the primer. And then control one to get the, the primary view up here. So we turn on the master start switch, we turn the magnetos to one plus two, and then we can hold this, this start switch to the left, and you will hear the pneumatic pressure spinning up the flywheel in the engine. You can also see the voltmeter in the center of the screen there wobbling around. When it gets to about eight, we will drag the start switch over to the right. So I'm doing it now. And the engine has fired. So we can now turn off that master start switch and we can close the pneumatic pressure valve and the engine is running. Okay, so now we can go and turn the alternator on. So if we press Control and 2, the lower center switch panel is down here. So next to the master battery switch is the alternator. So we can see suddenly we've got voltage showing up. And then we can turn the inverter on. So on the left switch panels on the bottom row, this is the, oops, wrong way. That's the inverter, yeah. We've turned it on. 
So we are now generating electricity. You lift switches to switch them on around the aircraft. All switches on the top row go up. So this is essentially turning on those various systems we were talking about around the aircraft. So then on the second row, the second switch and the third switch come on and then the brake. So those three. On the lower switch on the lower center switch panel, all the remaining switches that we've not used so far come on. Okay, and the checklist I have written down what each of the switches is. So if you wanted to learn them you can. So we can also go and turn on the rest of the avionics up here. Don't use the last one, you'll hear why. It makes an annoying noise, it's the radar altimeter. Okay, so, or radio altimeter I should say. It will obviously make a tone as you get closer to the ground and we are close to the ground so it's making a tone. Ah, uh, control one. We're going to turn the navigation lights on. Okay, now we're going to turn the taxi lights on and the landing lights while we're here. It's a little bit out of sequence, but it's not going to hurt us too much. So we now go back to the centre. We're going to turn the transponder to on. That's that blue switch. You've already done it. That's fine. And landing lights we've done. Primary instruments attitude indicator needs to be uncaged. So we'll go to the pilot's view and the attitude indicator. You push the plunger in and it uncages itself. You can also pull this lever out and the gyro compass you press D to align it and it will align with the binnacle compass okay and then you can see there's the ADF is down here we'll have a play with this a bit later you can line this up as well if we hold this in it will line up quickly so it's aligning the compass on the ADF so just hold it in and it will eventually get to 270 degrees which matches the the binnacle compass also the gyro compass and the binnacle compass and it will stop turning well that's the plan anyway there we go okay it's worth pointing out I've not got the navigation steps in the checklist the checklist is purely to get the airplane ready for flight it doesn't cover systems Okay, so the remaining levers to get ready for flight are, I'm just going to make sure I've got the parking brake on, and I have. Uh, if you watch outside, there's a cowl, the cowl flaps and the oil coolant, cooling flaps. So if we, if we lift the cowl flap switch and hold it upwards, watch outside. Can you see the cowl flaps opening there? Same goes for the oil cooling. You can't actually see them from here, but if you hold it on for a few seconds, that's going to open those cooling flaps. So just for the climb out, you want to keep the engine nice and cool, so that will help us do that. Uh, Peter Heat is in the caged switch here, so we're going to turn that on. Normally you don't turn Peter Heat on until you are within a minute or two of the runway. I've just come off the parking brake. I'm going to move the flaps to take off position on our way. And we are indeed on our way. That's just the aeroplane complaining there. Okay, so the main thing we're looking at tonight is uh, ADF. So let's just go and get in the air and then we can start playing with the ADF. So 75% throttle. I'm going to use quite a lot of right rudder to hold the centre line. And aircraft is lifting into the air, which is perfect. The Antonov will fly incredibly slowly. It's really, really, it's, it's short field performance. It's stunning, really. You can come in at 30 knots. Okay, so we're in the air. I've lifted the flaps and we are climbing away in the lovely afternoon in the English countryside. Okay, so I'm going to start a really slow turn to the right. 
and we'll have a little look at Little Nav Map, which is running in the background. So we're turning right, you can see us at the bottom of the map there. We're going to turn up towards the Westcott non-directional beacon of frequency of 335. So let's just level aim. I'm going to put some elevator trim in to let the aeroplane level itself up. I'm going to put a little bit of aileron trim in as well. So I'm doing this all on my yoke. Okay, we're getting there. So, now we've got the aeroplane fairly flying fairly well on its own. Of course, there's no autopilot in this, so we have to just be aware of what's going on. So I'm just arranging the view so I can see the ADF, and so can you see it, and the outside. <laughs> okay, so we turn the ADF to the first setting, which is essentially on. I'm not going to try and translate the Russian just yet. I'll, I'll work on that. So you have two systems. They, they call them near and far in their documentation, but it's essentially just two ADF units. And you can switch between them with this master switch here. So to tune it in, to do hundreds of kilohertz, you roll the outside and you'll see the number changing there. So we wanted 335, yeah? I'm just gonna turn right slightly. So we wanted 335, so we turned the hundreds of kilohertz to three. Then we use the lever to, ch to tune the tens of kilohertz. So we want three. So that's 330. Notice we can't tune the integers. So what we can do though is tune this knob range. So if we put that to there and watch the needle, there we go, we're getting a signal from the non-directional beacon. It's a weak signal because we're a long way away. Yeah? And then if you watch, the needle has swung around on the ADF and is, and is pointing straight at it now. So it's saying we're, well, we're flying straight towards it. We, well, we know we are. If we go and look at the map. But we're pointing straight towards it. That does not mean we are flying straight towards it, of course. You can roll the course around in, inside the instrument to choose your course. So to counteract the wind, you might purposely target an offset of a number of degrees to, you know, to offset the wind. But that's the basics of ADF navigation. So you tune the hundreds of kilohertz, the tens of kilohertz, the, the integers, you watch the needle, it sometimes takes a second or two after tuning the integers for the needle to react, and once you've got a signal you should start, you should see the needle start moving. You can see the co-pilot has a similar situation. I think the modes beyond um, the first mode of the, the mode switch detail kind of the, whether both instruments are showing the same radio or not. So I think you can combine them, but I, again, it's a struggle to find documentation on it. Anyway, hopefully that's been really useful and hopefully that will get people started with flying navigation in the Antonov AN2. So obviously you can fly around beacons all day long. So we're flying broadly towards the, the beacon. Should we fly over to Chalgrove to go land? So if we fly from where we are. We'll obviously just have to fly a heading to get there. So we've got a gyro compass here. Remember, a gyro compass will drift, so strong manoeuvring will cause it to drift away from the, the binnacle compass, the magnetic compass. So we're going to fly over to Chelgrove and go and land. Just cutting the throttle back mixture back. Obviously now we're in flight we could have um, closed those cowl flaps which I'm just doing. Oops and it's all a bit fiddly isn't it and close those oil flaps as well. Let's 
go and have a look at the map. So we're going broadly the right direction to get to Shellgrove. If we draw a line on the map, we can see the exact direction we need to be going. So 250 degrees will do. So if we look down here, we can see we're at 240 degrees at the moment. So if we turn right slightly, you see that's... Um, it's the interesting thing is this will drift from that, this will drift from the compass, so none of this old navigation hardware is very exact. You have to be very careful with it all. So we'll just descend gently. We've got um, indicated airspeed here, it's in kilometres per hour. You can see we're just on the verge while we're descending of overspeeding, so I'm going to pull the throttle back. If you wanted to know how to turn the fans on, the switches are here. You can turn this fan on, and over here for the co pilot. So we can have some fans on in the cockpit, which is quite cool. <laughs> cool, get it? <laughs> own jokes now. Um, but otherwise I love this aeroplane. I, it works so nicely. So let's have a look in front of us, see where we are. So we're, obviously we're drifting a little bit where the wind is pushing us. So we will turn left a little bit further. We should see the, the beacon of the airfield soon in the distance. See, this aircraft is from an era when VFR would have ruled. So we've got about five miles to go. Obviously we don't go very fast in this aeroplane. If you're wondering where you've seen this aeroplane recently on TV, you will have seen it in um, Stranger Things, in the most recent uh, season when they escaped Russia. They flew in an Antonov AN-2. very famous aeroplane. I think something in the region of 18,000 of them were built. There's a lot of them around. There's still a lot of them around. They were built very sturdily. The clicking you can hear is me trimming. So, based on the wind, we really want to be coming in runway 18, don't we? So we're going to turn right. You can see the airfield down here. Let's see? It's all a bit misty today, isn't it? that's the plan. Obviously we won't need the whole runway. Should we turn that fan off? It can be quite annoying, can't it? Should we turn the other one off as well? Okay, so here's runway 18 in the mist emerging in front of us. So we're going to pull the throttle back. Keep it on the airspeed. So I am reliably informed that you cannot stall an Antonov. So 
but should we try that out on our approach here? Let's go full flaps. So the throttle is pulled right the way back and we are on approach. It's a huge runway. We don't need anything like this length of runway. So we'll hold it just off the runway and see if it will stall or not. In fact, that's even better. Let's pull the engines completely. Let's pull the mixture. more and more back stick we've touched the ground so despite our best efforts it just smoothly mushed into the ground almost at walking pace it's quite stunning really isn't it of course now we have no hydraulic oh we still do have some hydraulic power I guess they're using electric motors to raise the flaps and we've rolled to a stop so we'll put the parking brakes on and we'll power things down while we're sat here. It's all very easy to switch things off, you just reverse everything we've just done. It's just a lot of switches, that's all. Ah. Something I didn't point out when I recorded the video earlier is all the windows and everything work. It's, it's all rather lovely actually. Also you can um, wander around in the back of the Phantom as well, so you have to use various keys to move around, but it's really, really nicely done. I, I think it's fantastic actually. So there you go. The Antonov AN2, and I'm sure I'll be doing lots of flights with it in the near future. But what a fantastic aeroplane, and it's really good value as well. Okay, I'll see you again soon.